Yeah, it's gonna be. This kind of sucks. I was hoping to have my normal uh, X clip recording, but I can't do that, so that sucks. Well, welcome to the video. You might notice that you might be asking yourself, ask me, hey, why is your camera in a different place right now? And I say, why are you the most of you in my house? Uh, get up, get out of here, weirdo. No, but so. I tried to color code because, you know, I like to color code sometimes. So I got purple ring, purple shirt, amethyst, uh, necklace, purple mask. We're color coding bitches. In any case, today I'm going to be looking at The Regulators, um, uh, a book published under the pseudonym by Stephen King. Oh, uh, oh yeah, even this is purple. Nice. The writing for this book is purple. It's all coming together, boys. Okay, the regulators is a, is a about a pop a Poplar Street, or about a place called Poplar Street. I, I think it's in Cincinnati or a suburb of uh, in a suburb of Cincinnati. But more important, important, more importantly, how it gets gaped by Mr. Tax Chungus. All right, now. The, the first uh, murking is a kid on a paper route. I think it's named Brian. And vans roll up and shoot him as he thinks about his titties. Nice. Now, dog lovers, I'm sorry, a dog also gets murked. Oops. But the people of Poplar Street are shocked and assume that it's a gang hit. Now, but as more and more people get, you know, iced in the streets and home and in their homes, something doesn't seem quite salt and pepper to these suburbanists. There is some foreshadowing, something that, you know, involved the suicide of Mr. Ryler, one of the residents, or, or I should say, one of the former residents of Propway Street. So, spoilers, I know this is very uh, early in my script, but yeah, we're, we're getting spoilers already. So you might as well, uh, but if you like me, um, that won't bother you, would it? Right. The main villain of the book is a supernatural, or rather transdimensional, being named Tag. He's the ca cause of all the death on Poplar Street. In between Bear and whatever street. I guess. All right. You know, you see, Seth, before Seth came to, came to his aunt's, aunt, he lived with his family in, I don't know, bump up nowhere, I don't remember. But, um, yeah, I didn't mention, I'm not mentioning most of these characters uh, until they need to come up. Because there's a lot of characters in this book. Um, it was kind of hard for me to keep track of their names all the time. I felt like Desperation had a better, I had a better time keeping track of all the characters. Yeah. So Seth Garns, the autistic a kid for this book and I couldn't be happier with this inclusion of my uh, demographic that being autistic people um, who get really excited about children shows yep I love it so that's awesome now Seth is an autistic kid who has a mental has the mental mental fortitude that's as far as exceeds his uh, physical capabilities is it a bit 90s ish yeah, I bet. You bet your patootie it's fucking 90s ish. Now, he was on he was on a trip that took him to Nevada, a Nevada mining town named Desperation. And that he begged to go in. Now granted, Seth's a not not a not very verbal person. In fact, I wouldn't call him nonverbal. He just he just can't always talk. So this surprised his family enough to take him over to the mining operation in that town of desperation and so that's why they, you know, they even took him seriously now he ran on a tour of the mine he ran in and caught black lung <laughs> now he wished he caught black lung he caught something much worse an std named pack he picked oh yeah i forgot i'm going off the script when i said that all right in any other case that'd be the attack would literally tear apart his inhabitants, but because human, because of the humans and mental and physical capabilities, I'm pretty sure he didn't say it this way, but it's like 
you know, shoving a huge, huge sausage, God, I keep YouTube friendly, into a, you know, micro condom. I think that didn't get by, you know, YouTube program, you know, play my bottom for that. Now, this is one of the things that has no bearing other than displaying, you know, what, that a woman is racist? Yeah, oh yeah, Stephen King does not show this. This is almost one of my favorite highlights of the book, is this, is this fucking scene. This is like some, you know, of, like, scenes where they try to escape and where they're just talking about what the hell is going on. Because for the most of the book, they're just kept in the dark about what's actually going on. And so there's a white, a black lady and Karen in the same house. They're all like huddled together, trying to stay alive. And the Karen spits a swear at the black lady. Now, understandably, everyone's like, whoa, 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 what the fuck? And, it, and the lady says, let's get, a, says to her daughter, let's get away from these hateful people. And the daughter's like, no, mom, I, I kind of rather stay with these people right now. They seem to be better people than you. And the mother's like, <laughs> and it, uh, she's a basic a Karen before the term became popular. I'm mad I didn't see this on first impression. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, like that'd be if I went over to some fat person and said, You need to look wh lose weight because you're looking pretty round. Okay, for those of you who haven't, who haven't seen me below the ear, I, I, I'm kind of chonky a bit. I'm working on it though. Working at it so I could call people out. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Now, hypothetical racist aside, or sorry, hypocritical, hypocritical racist aside, the final act involves an ex cop. Also, speaking of the ex cop, one of those things I mentioned earlier where they're trying to really just figure out and get help is a bit where. Oh, yeah, that. Hold up, I'm real tangent hard right now. That sounds like something you could take out of context. If I ever get fans enough to do that, we might make a thing out of that. In any case, um, the cop, it, you know, was also something uh, the the Murph kid at the beginning thought about. He's like, oh, he sounds he. The rumor is that he, you know, took out like a, a, he killed a person because he cop killed a person. And I'm thinking, now that I'm thinking about it, it kind of sounds like a goosebumps thing. Like, the rumor is that that, you know, her teacher killed a kid because he asked for a pencil. You know, like, the cop, the rumor that the cop killed the person, he just didn't, apparently. Like, when I remember, he just, you know, found out something he wasn't and got, you know, got cut. But anyway, in any case. Yes. Yeah, the ex-cop also witnesses a kid shoot his brother, and then Merc himself, and then the kid marks himself. I, I'm just saying Merc a lot because I like saying it. So you got Merc. Now, the weird thing is, I'm, I'm just, I'm leaving out why, what the danger is in that situation, because I want you to read this. It's fun. It's a fun clusterfuck. Yes. Now, the ex-cop and Miss Ryler. Miss Ryler is the aunt of, uh, Sid. Yes. So Miss Ryler, Audrey Ryler, is the lady who took in uh, Seth Darwin after his family was also murdered. Um, it was like that day was like you know bottom of the lake murder. That's how that's what I'm talking about. And now they walk upstairs. It was previously a one-story house. I believe it was. Yeah. And no, it wasn't two-story. Anyway, yeah, yeah. She, they walk upstairs to go get him because he was emptying himself. You know, thanks, Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Audrey. And at the end of the book, it begins with Audrey and Seth are shocked by by the woman who's following him. Yes, a woman who's following him. I don't remember her name. I'm not going to look it up because that's not important. The point is they get shot. Now, everything has returned to normal as, as a poet as if one is scarred by the trauma that just happened. For reference, a lady's arm 
was blown nearly all up. And then they, it, it was almost like children. It was like, maybe if we put it back on, it will leave. You, you don't even know what they were fucking thinking. Which is weird for a book. Now, I would go read the book. Uh, there were, like I said, like, there was a thing I left out. Like, who iced the paper boy? Uh, what returned normal after Seth got ganked? And a couple of scenes and characters that, you know, I thought might encourage, you know, like, all the part so they get people to, to encourage people to read the book. Now, it's shorter than its mirror novel, I'll tell you that much. But literally, like, some cursive bits, and I, I know some boomers can be like, why don't you learn cursive? I'm like, because no one needs to know it except for their signature. And I just never fucking learned it. I think they taught me it as, as a kid. But there's some bits and cursive, not enough to matter. It just, you know, it was trouble for me wanting to read the whole book when there was cursive because I couldn't fucking read it. It got to the point where, like, when I was reading uh, the Dark Half, I'm like, I almost asked my mom to just translate it for me. In any case, um, yes. Now, like its mirror novel, it, it's kind of an anomaly for Stephen King. It's usually some of the kills, or most of the uh, satisfying kills, or anything like that, or just kills that you know, are because of bad, bad behavior or happen to bad people. Is that's usually who it happened to? Just bad people, racist, um, racist. People. I think the late. Oh yeah, I think the lady who got who shot Seth was the racist lady. But like, yeah, mostly people who are bad people get ganked. Like uh, Frank Dodds. Yes, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. But in this book, it's really, it's really just. People who get people who get killed don't necessarily deserve it, or really don't. Now, I'm also including uh, the lady, who, the lady who cheated on her husband and doesn't deserve to get killed for this, because doesn't deserve to get killed. Is all although adultery is a grievous breach of trust. I don't like to believe that it is punishable by death, because obviously now yes the book is very nice although very graphic it, like it's saying something because stephen king himself is he writes very graphically but this this is something it's like he's literally painting a picture just for gore no, yeah okay. a graphically fun clusterfuck of wild west gangbanging that's what i wrote and that's, this was published uh, under King's pseudonym, uh, Richard Bachman. I was going to have the cover art on the on the stream behind me with my usual recording stream, uh, recording uh, software, but that needed reauthentication, and I didn't feel like doing that because I really wanted to do this and get this out. So. Well, that's the regulators. Um, soon, maybe today at the very least, I'll be having a lot of desperation as well. I hope that by then I'll have uh, XSplit fixed. I hope you had a good time. I decided to write a little more jokes than I usually do, just because Stephen King's not, there's not a lot to joke about in a King novel, you know? So yeah, have a good day. I'm going to get my lunch go.